Hey everyone, it's Matt, and today I will be reading to you another SCP entry. I do hope you'll enjoy it. Here we go. Item number SCP-5091. Object class... Safe. Formerly Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-5091 is to be contained at Site 10 and given Level 3 access. Staff should monitor SCP-5091 and watch for any anomalous activity, including tearing of its flesh, excessive leakage of blood, or bone protrusions. Once per week, SCP-5091 is to undergo testing by a site psychologist to ensure its mental state is sound. In the case that separation of SCP-5091 and its current flesh occurs, previous containment procedures should be reinstated. Previous containment procedures. SCP-5091 is to be contained within a standard humanoid containment cell with an attached bathroom. A wall of SCP-5091's containment unit is to be converted into a mirror. All personnel that come into contact with SCP-5091 are to give compliments towards his current appearance and are to remain respectful when interacting with it. SCP-5091 is to be monitored 24 hours a day by staff with a level 2 clearance or above. If SCP-5091 is observed peeling its flesh back and emerging from it, Mutasho D procedure. Description SCP 5091 is a sapient human skeleton approximately 1.8 meters tall and weighing 2.5 kilograms when not encompassed by skin and flesh. It moves in a consistent manner to that of a human muscular system, despite the lack of any muscles or flesh. SCP-5091 speaks a form of Old English that seems to be constant with the language used in the early 1800s. Most notable is its anomalous stretch it past its original elasticity, breaking the bonds that normally attach it to the bone. SCP-5091 will peel the flesh from the human until it has entirely removed the flesh. In all instances of this occurring, both the skeleton and the flesh were completely removed and fully intact. The skeletal remains consist of only bone and cartilage, with no other tissue, organs, or even the nervous system. The rest of the body slumps down into a mass of skin and organs. SCP-5091 will only do this when in its skeletal form. SCP-5091 
will proceed to stretch and pull the mass of flesh over top of itself like donning a jumper. human. On close inspection, several unnatural lumps can be seen where organs did not fit correctly, and the skin around the eyes and mouth will be offset slightly. This ability has not been observed occurring since the consciousness linkage experiment caused SCP-5091's consciousness to merge with that of its current flesh host, Dr. Redacted. Addendum 5091.1 Discovery Log 1 Initial Discovery Transcript Staten Island, New York, United States. Present, SCP-5091, Agent Markov, and Mobile Task Force Pi-1. Agent. 
Agent Markov. Further DNA tests on Agent Markov, now known to be SCP-5091, confirmed that it was wearing his actual flesh. Log 2, Interview A Transcript. Date, June 15th. 2019. Location. Site 10. Wing D. Interrogation Room 3. Interviewed. SCP-5091. Interviewer. Dr. Daniels. Forward. SCP-5091 is interviewed after initial containment. Begin log. Welcome to our containment site. Do you know why you are here? Well, sir, by the look of this room, I assume I have been detained by the police. For what reason I cannot imagine. Are you an officer? Something like that. Can you tell me why you attacked Agent Markov and his team when he initiated contact with you on the 25th of May? Attacked someone? My word, no! A gentleman such as I would never attack anyone. I was simply growing tired of my skin suit, and when I saw three new ones delivered right to my door, I had to try them on immediately. Skin suit? Is that what you call us? Well, of course. Might I be so bold as to say your skin suit is looking very fine today? You wouldn't mind if I tried you on, would you? SCP-5091 is seen reaching forward toward Dr. Daniels. I wouldn't do that if I were you. We have a hundred thousand volts of electricity ready to hit you if you try any. Electrical sounds mixed with human screams last for about fifteen seconds. End log. Closing statement. SCP-5091 was hit with 100,000 volts of electricity, quickly melting all the flesh off of its body. However, SCP-5091 remained unhindered in its skeletal form. It was able to move through the electric field and pull Dr. Daniel's skin from his skeleton and put it on. Addendum 1591.2 Log 3 Incident Transcript Date June 29th, 2019 Location Site 10 Wing B Containment Room Present, Agent Mark Knox, SCP-5091, and Site Guards. Begin Log. SCP-5091, please cease your current action and return to your bunk. My word, are you watching me? You do know that it is very rude for you to watch a gentleman while he is changing, don't you? Stop removing your skin at once. Stop! Audibly loud flesh plopping sounds are heard. Ah, now to find a new skin suit. Seems you are not very hospitable here. Not a single change of apparel was provided. Call the doctor right away. SCP-5091's behavior has changed. Two D-class guards enter the cell to restrain SCP-5091. Ah, there we go. I see you have sent me a few spare skin suits. I charge this place too swiftly. I apologize. Step away from the uh, flesh pile and return to your bunk. SCP-5091 moves towards the D-class and is fired upon and hit with several rounds of ammo. It's not going down, man. It's invincible. Run! A D-class flees the room, but SCP-5091 grabs the second one. Human 
of screams lasting 30 seconds are heard. I think this skin suit should work well. Many thanks. And log. Addendum. SCP-5091 peeled the flesh from the guard and proceeded to pull the mass of skin and organs over its own skeletal body. SCP-5091's bone and skeletal structure appear to be high tensile and will not be damaged by conventional means. Restrictions should be Transcript. Date, July 15th, 2019. Location, Site 10, Wing D, Interrogation Room 6. Interviewed, SCP-5091. Interviewer, Dr. Redacted. Forward. SCP-5091 and its origins. Begin log. I apologize for the lack of a physical in-person interview. After the events of your last interview, I think this is for the best. I should refuse to answer any of your questions. You are no gentleman. And locking me away without a skin suit to wear, and now insulting me with this voice-only interview. I know how it must seem, but we cannot allow you to just kill anyone you want for their skin. It would in fact be ungentlemanly of us if we let you hurt anyone. Sir, you are not making any sense. The skin suits I wear don't wish it otherwise. How can one harm the apparel that they wear? Would you at least be able to wear the same skin suit indefinitely, or for a long period of time? Why do you need to replace your skin so frequently? Oh, what a horrible notion. Not only would I grow tired of it, but think of all the other skin suits out there. So many of them to try on. What a waste my existence would be if I could not display the craftsmanship of skin suits. Tell you what, I think we can come to a compromise. If you agree to answer my questions, I will give you my word that we will provide you with a skin suit afterward. Deal? I will take that deal under the stipulation that you do not view me while I am without a skin suit. It is humiliating. All right. During the interview, we will both be voice only. I promise. Excellent. A gentleman's word is the most powerful thing he has. Ask me anything. First of all, do you not destroy your skin suits when you discard them for a new one? My word, I am affronted by that, sir. I display my skin suits for plenty of time before finishing with them. I am elevating their very existence. The tailor of such a work of art could not ask for a better show of his masterpiece. Can you tell me where you come from? Certainly. I hail from the land of Neverment, a wonderful place where I can relax after my travels. The Neverment? I have heard of this place. Never been there, though. What a pity. Its beauty is unmatched. You will have to visit sometime. Maybe one day. Can you tell me how you came to be in our city of New York? Well, I simply caught the midnight train from the station, redacted, to New York. 
The trip was uneventful and only lasted a few years. Years, you say? Is that not a long period of time for you? Not at all, sir. I was quite surprised by how quick the trip was. It can often take several hundred years to reach one's destination on the midnight train. Quite interesting. Can you elaborate more on how this midnight train works? Maybe later. But for now, I think that was quite enough. I am anxious to get into my new skin suit. Very well. I will have you return to your containment cell and one sent in immediately. Thank you, good sir. I cannot wait. End log. Closing statement. Questioning of SCP-5091 has proven valuable as it seems to have a knowledge of other anomalies. Most notably is SCP-5091's home city that it refers to as never meant in the midnight train it travels on. Unfortunately, SCP-5091 seems to only cooperate with Foundation staff while wearing a human's flesh, referring to it as a skin suit. SCP-5091 seems to view humans as we would a garment, to be worn and shown off, then discarded. There must be a way we can show it the effect it has on people. Log 5, Decommissioned, Procedure Kasha Mutasho D. Forward. Due to the fact that SCP-5091 refuses to divulge any useful information while in a skeletal state, the site director ordered that a containment procedure to keep SCP-5091 content while contained be established. Doctor redacted requested permission to attempt the experimental C-Link procedure on SCP-5091, but the request was denied. Procedure. This procedure is performed by a team of D-Class and closely monitored by Level 2 personnel. The team of D-Class will enter the containment unit with cleaning equipment and stand in a linear formation facing SCP-5091. SCP-5091 will look them over and eventually choose one of them as a replacement for its discarded flesh. It will proceed. floor. It will then take the mass of skin and organs previously known as the D-Class and pull it over top of its own skeletal body. Once this process is complete, the remaining D-Class will use the cleaning equipment to remove the discarded skeleton and tissue and dispose of them. Addendum 5091.3 Log 6, Dr. Redacted's Journal Entry A Date, January 12th, 2020 Entry I have been carefully monitoring sessions with SCP-5091 as it divulges information. Brain activity has been detected from SCP-5091 during periods when it is wearing a skin suit, and none when in its skeletal form. I have determined that any humanoid SCP-5091 uses as its skin suit remains conscious and retains their sensory ability. The levels of brain activity in the parietal lobe indicate that subjects made to encompass SCP-5091 experience 
extreme levels of prolonged neuralgia. After SCP-5091 discards a flesh mass for a new target, all brain activity ceases within minutes. I cannot stand by as the site director allows so many people to be tortured and killed by SCP-5091 in the pursuit of knowledge. All observation of SCP-5091 points to it being benevolent and simply not comprehending its effect on the people it kills. There is an experimental method of forcing two consciousnesses to link, allowing them to access the thoughts of each other. Unfortunately, the usage of C-Link with an unstable SCP is strictly forbidden. I have sent in requests to the director and the O5 Council to attempt its utilization on SCP-5091. Each time, the requests have been immediately denied. experiment without authorization. If I am able to access said method without drawing scrutiny, I believe that I can integrate it into a chip to be used in a human subject's brain. This, in theory, would allow a bond to be formed with the subject's consciousness and SCP-5091s, causing it to experience the same The only problem is that without approval, I would have no D-Class available to attempt this experiment on. Log 7, Consciousness Linkage Experiment Transcript Date, February 25th, 2020 Location, Site 10, Wing D Testing Room 13 Subjects, SCP-5091 and Dr. Redacted. Procedure, the microchip known as C-Link-3 will be implanted in a human's brain. Once complete, SCP-5091 will be told to remove the human's flesh and put it over its skeletal structure. Once this is complete, the microchip will activate and should establish a consciousness link between the subject and SCP-5091. Begin log. Alright, it's on. Do you understand exactly what you need to do after I implant the chip into my brain? I do, sir. I am to put you on as my new skin suit. Might I add that it is an honor to finally wear you? Yeah, yeah, let's just hope ceiling three works. Otherwise, this will have all been in vain. Whatever you say, sir. I am now inserting the chip into my brain, utilizing a pre-programmed robotic surgery arm with an attached needle. Mechanical noise mixed with a few painful grunts is heard from Dr. Redacted. Implant inserted successfully. Time elapsed, 30 minutes, 43 seconds. Doctor? Doctor? My word, he is out cold. Well, no time to waste. I did promise to wear his skin suit. Audibly loud, fleshy sounds are heard. Ah, there we are. This skin suit will suit me if... SCP-5091 suddenly breaks off and gives out loud screams of pain, lasting a total of 75 minutes. End log. Addendum. the hospital.
hospital wing where they discovered he was actually SCP-5091 and quickly recontained him. Log 8, Dr. Bones' journal entry B. Date, March 2nd, 2020. Entry. After experiencing the pain firsthand that the human subjects do when their skeleton is removed, SCP-5091 has sworn to never perform a flesh removal on a human again. While we do both share a single consciousness now, SCP-5091 is still able to control the movement while I allow it to experience all the human emotions and senses. There were several weeks of turmoil where our consciousnesses fought for dominance. However, SCP-5091 and I have been able to come to a mutual agreement. We will work together as one and perform our duties for the Foundation. SCP-5091 is a rather nice fellow once you get to know him. The Foundation was skeptical of our ability to work in tangent. However, over the last few months, we have convinced them of our ability. The site director was rather upset when he learned of my insubordination. He classified me as dead and redacted my name from all Foundation documents. The staff of Site 10 colloquially nicknamed us Dr. Bones, a name I am growing rather fond of. One intriguing side effect of my merging with SCP-5091 is my ability to access its memories. While it is still hard for me to comprehend them, in time I should be able to learn more about SCP-5091 and its origins. And that about does it for SCP-5091.